Mm-hmm. And we're rolling. Hi guys, welcome to another episode of Beyond the Lecture podcast where we talk everything and anything education. My name is Aaron. I'm the program lead for media and communications here at DSB Academy and the host of the show. Today, we're going to talk about some of the biggest causes of anxiety for anyone who is about to start their journey in tertiary education. College, university, what is there to expect when you're going through all these things? We're going to answer some of the most commonly Googled questions about college or university. And hopefully, we can help you clear off some doubts and worries when you enter into this new phase of life. To help us with all that, I have my buddy Suresh here, who heads one of the student recruitment teams in PSB Academy. So naturally, he deals with such questions on a regular basis. Take it away, Suresh. Hey, Aaron. Uh, hey, guys. Uh, Suresh here. So I actually lead the sales and marketing team uh, here at the School of Business Management, PSB Academy. And I guess we are the first uh, people who actually speak to students, um, help them with their decisions, help them with their questions. And I guess we have a big part to play in that. Yeah. So I'm just going to go straight into it then. I'm just, I'm sure parents mm-hmm. ask you a lot about all these questions all the time before they actually sign on the dotted lines and pay the money, right? Uh, it's like, is college even worth it? Uh, what, should my, what, what should my son or daughter learn? What causes is the right one? These are all valid questions. Mm-hmm. And I'm sure, especially during these trying times, it's a great cause of concern. So we're going to go through all of those things. Yep. But before that, I did a little bit of Googling. Mm-hmm. Okay, to find out what are the most popular questions. So mm-hmm. we're going to go through some of them. Okay, so I'm going to load up my iPad here and see yep. uh, what are the questions that we want to answer. So the first one is, is college and university the same thing? Mm-hmm. Okay, what okay. do you think? Uh, I guess we got to look at it in, in a couple of perspectives. I, I think uh, the word college is usually used in... Uh, the American context. Uh, so I think that's where there's some confusion. But I think in the local context, you would hear pre-university, junior college. So anything up to the point where you go into a university degree program, you could term that as college. This is my perspective again, my opinion. Um, when it comes to a university program, it would be conferred by uh, an institution, whether it's a university in you know Singapore, UK, uh, Australia, New Zealand, wherever. Uh, but I think anything up to that point where you get a university degree, that would be uh, a college. Yeah. But you see, it might confuse some people because, uh, again, just based on our experience, mm-hmm. being in education for a couple of years now, is that there are certain things that, as a college, uh, they cannot do, right? Mm-hmm. Or they cannot, they cannot confer certain qualifications, like yep. what you said, a degree or a master's or any postgraduate qualifications. Yep. A college cannot do that. Mm-hmm. They can deliver it, but yeah. they cannot confer it. Am I right to assume that? That is correct. I mean, uh, yes, you have to be a university uh, to actually confer a degree. Uh, I think it is important to have that uh, because if you don't have that, then everybody would say that, you know what, I'm going to give out a degree. I'm going to give out a master's, a doctorate. And I think this is a way to actually also confirm or, or verify quality uh, of the education. So yeah, uh, a university is the degree. Uh, a college, um, you can give out certificates, diplomas that lead up to a degree. But, okay, so I'm just going to be devil's advocate here. <laughs> Why can't colleges confer degrees then? I mean, I, I know this is out of our wheelhouse, yeah. you know, I get that. But why do you think they cannot confer? I mean, because you've already said, and just because they, they, they have the stature and the, the title of a yep. university, right? Why can't just a college just rename themselves and call it, you know, uh, University XYZ mm. and then confer their own degrees? Okay. Yeah? Why don't you think that works? Okay. Maybe at least from my understanding, uh, we have worked with, uh, or, or PSB currently works with uh, universities that used to be polytechnics. So when they're polytechnic, they can give out a diploma. So I think the level of education, what they confer would be different. Um, they have switched uh, and actually been uh, uh, converted to a university mm. status. So now they actually give out degrees. Um, but I think it's also um, whether you're actually conferring tertiary level education up to a certain level or is it going to go up to a higher level? And I think there are different standards and registrations, which is honestly beyond me. Uh, mm. But I, I think the, it would actually be more about the leveling more than anything else. All right. Mm. All right. Okay. So... The next big one, mm. which I see uh, also in uh, Google, yep. 
uh, I think it's uh, pertinent during this time is this. Is college, let's just throw in university there, is college and university even worth it? Okay, I'm going to start with this, okay? Uh, it's tough times, you know, and uh, understandably so, a lot of people will be thinking, um, do I keep the money in the pot, mm-hmm. you know, or do I take out 20, 30, 40k to fund uh, my education or my kids' education, right? If I have... Uh, a child who's finishing school and is about to go to college or university, Mm -hmm. uh, do I put a hole on that just to keep my family afloat? Or do I even take a bank loan and uh, risk all that financial debt? Mm -hmm. These are big questions. They're huge questions. Yeah, big questions. And there is, okay, there is no way we are in a position to sort of uh, convince people to do this or that, right? So from my end, Right from my perspective, is that you should go to university, you should go to colleges, but I think there's a there's a good there's a great need there in, uh, to sort of figure out how to balance everything out mm-hmm. uh, and to make sure that the family or the the collective good of the family is is not going into some kind of a big financial debt in order for one person to uh, continue their education, however worthwhile that may be, at least during such times. Mm -hmm. I don't know. What do you think? Uh, I think education is a huge pillar of our lives. Mm -hmm. Um, Yes, you have the basic needs. You you need to take care of your your livelihood, your well-being. Uh, But then the next few things you would think about is education. And we're an Asian society. Education is always going to be a a big part, whether it's going to be our parents telling us or is it us deciding, you know, do we want that? Um, The institutions in in our society are also based a lot on progression through qualifications, education qualification, Mm -hmm. formal educational qualifications, like diplomas, degrees, masters, doctorates. Um, Society won't change Mm -hmm. uh, just because now we have a different focus. Uh, and if you look um, at what a lot of things are happening out there, people are saying you need skills. Skills are absolutely necessary. You need to upgrade all the time, 100%. I think if somebody says that, you know, I've got my degree, I've got my master's, I'm, I'm done with the formal education, uh, I would be worried. Um, even in, in my state uh, or on my current level or what I do, uh, I tell my team, you have to upgrade yourself all the time. Uh, so you're not stagnant. You have to understand what's going on. Um, whether that's going to be a formal qualification for somebody who has a degree or a master's, that's a different thing. But I, I don't think if you, I think if you don't have that, um, it would be good and necessary because when you flip the, uh, sorry, we don't flip the newspaper as much anymore. <laughs> no, we don't. <laughs> now we scroll through the net and we look for okay. jobs. They put their basic bachelor's degree is necessary. Right. A diploma is necessary. Um, and I think until how society sees formal education, um, I think it would be necessary. Another thing to look at, I think now people talk a lot about skills. So if you're looking at skills, digital marketing skills, um, data data science skills, business analytics skills, these used to be just skill-based programs. But if you look at how it is now, we have a degree in digital marketing. We have uh, degrees in cybersecurity. Uh, you have programs out there in business analytics. So whatever used to be skill is slowly becoming um, formal qualifications by universities, institutions. Mm. Um, so eventually, once society catches up, um, skill-based programs will become academic programs. Um, so should you upgrade? Yes. Uh, should you look at your financial situation? Absolutely. I think it's important that we take care of the basics first. Um, then after that, we look at what is important to us in terms of where we want to be in society. Where do you want to uh, move up to in the next level? And that's mm. where a degree will definitely come in as a big play, uh, in my opinion. I think it's, it's, it's a rather important thing to, to also remember that you've got to always figure out a way to add value to yourself. And uh, that, you know, even if you've gotten a PhD, you know, you, you've got to figure out ways on how... Uh, you can keep on learning, keep on uh, adding that extra layer of value on yourself time after time again. So even during such a such a time, during uh, you know, COVID-19 or something, uh, 
that form of value may or may not come in the form of a diploma or a higher diploma or advanced degree or something. But short courses work just as well. You know, uh, taking a, a certificate course in Adobe, for example, um, mm-hmm. that is something that adds value if you don't have it already. Uh, and uh, that's something that I, I also tell my students a lot is that just because you've graduated or you've finished uh, your degree and you've gotten it, doesn't mean it ends there. You know, uh, you got to keep on figuring out ways to learn. And a way to do that is to make sure that whatever you've chosen to learn is something that you're passionate about. That yep. that keeps that keeps the fuel going. Correct. Yep. Right? So that's a good segue though because I'm, what I'm going to ask next is what courses yeah. are the best ones to go for? You know, do you... Do you go for the safe courses? Like, uh, I'm not, I'm not trying to diss business here, but for example, <laughs> the the business, the the accounting and the marketing, or do you go for something that is a little bit more niche, but it but it's something that you're passionate about, mm. right? Um, that's a that's a that's a really age old question. Yeah, uh, it's it's been around since education has been around, really. So, yeah. uh, and keep in mind that we are. You've said it earlier. We are Asian. Yeah. You know, um, we we tend to go for the safe routes, and mm. especially, especially, I mean, uh, I don't want to generalize, but the the parents also want their kids to 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 study something that they know they're going to be able to get a job in the future. Yep. Right. So, what is your feel on this? I, I think this is uh, it's a very complex question. There's there's uh, there's many layers to it. So parents will always want the best for the kids. Yeah. And I think, um, thankfully, more and more parents that I, I see and interact with, the one thing they, they say is, they tell their kids, find something you're passionate about, something you like. I think when I was younger, I didn't have those kind of options. Or maybe we didn't have the knowledge to look for more. Um, um, you see people now going into digital marketing graphic design, media and communication, um, analytics, um, cybersecurity, mm. sports science. You have all these different fields. Uh, in the past, we didn't have such a, a wide range. Mm. So I, I think the decision-making process of a lot of people is, uh, if you're young, you, you follow your friends. Mm. Other people follow passion and others follow money. Um, to the question, uh, what is the right course? There isn't a right course. It is the course that is right for you. It would really matter what you think is is something that you are going to do in your life. I mean, I could have studied accounting, excelled at it, but I don't like it. I won't find the motivation, the passion to go into doing that as a career. Or eventually what you do is you come back to school um, and you would actually go through a, a whole new set of retraining or reskilling and going back that going back down, uh, out there in the market. Um, it happens. There is nothing wrong in it. Some people take longer to actually find their passions. Um, but I think it's really important to, to find something that you like doing. Um, in, the, in the past, people said gaming was a waste of time. You know, people keep playing games. Right. But these guys are developing s- softwares and, and apps mm. and they're making a lot more money than a lot of us. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> I mean, that, it, it's, it's the passion. They yeah. followed their passion and they made it work. Yeah. Yeah. But you see, it's, uh, there are two groups of students um, or potential students every time I, I encounter them, which is there is one group who knows what they want, right, and goes for it. You know, and uh, typically you'll find that in uh, the more niche courses, okay, right, because they, they either find that they're interested in it mm-hmm. or they can, uh, or they feel like this is an area of passion, you know. But there's another group of students which is which I find is the the more worrying. Okay, uh, worrying in a sense where they they are about to enter into this new phase of life, but they have haven't got a clue of what they are interested in. Mm-hmm. Right? They, I, I'm sure, you know, as a, as a program consultant yourself previously, and you've probably encountered students who who say, "I don't know what I want." You know, I don't know what I'm interested in. Uh, Therefore, I'm going to sign up for business. Yeah, you know, I'm sure you've seen that. It so, happens all the time. Exactly. So, yeah. uh, 
how do you deal with those things? You know, do you, at the point of sign up, do you tell them, you know, maybe you go home and think about it a little bit more or, or do you, you know, deploy a different strategy and try to counsel them into something else? What do you do? Yeah. Um, I think it's important to ask them more questions. I, I think what we do, it's, it's important to get students to uh, understand that uh, this is a huge decision, uh, not just for now, potentially for your future. Um, so it's, it's important when, when I w- would speak to them to ask them, what do they want to do with this? Why do they want to do business? Or why do they want to do engineering? Um, what, what actually brought them here in the first place? Um, and in and, and some fields, you don't know. Some people are just passionate about making money. So mm. they might love sales, but they need to understand business. Mm. So in those cases, a general business degree works. So it, somebody doesn't come in like, oh, I actually, I, I'm passionate about making money. You, you can make money in anything. Mm. Yeah. You don't need a degree to make money. But at the same time, you, you say that, you know, I think I'll be really good at sales because mm. I like to interact. I like to talk. I, I, I see, it, I, I see the, the sales process as banter, a good challenge. Then you got to understand business. You need to understand the marketing. You need to understand the operations. Um, the finance and all of this because you're not just going to do sales forever. You're going to start moving up eventually and you want to be able to understand how all the functions interact with each other. Mm. Um, and that's going to make a huge difference. So it's important for myself, my team, to make sure we ask these questions and unlock those answers. I think when students or anybody actually comes to that point and they can have a deeper um, discussion with you, then the commitment is there because... Uh, if somebody says, I just want to do hospitality, I'm like, okay, great. Sign up for hospitality. That's my job done. But yep. you don't know why they want to do it. Mm. When you, you find out, they're just like, actually, I love travel. Mm. You could be a travel blogger or vlogger and you're probably supposed to do like media comp. Right. Yeah. It's right. different. Yep. So the travel is the area, but the, the function or, or what they're looking at could be something very different. So asking those questions, you veer them in the right direction and they study and they stay, and they eventually are happy and fulfilled in what they do. But it's becoming a little bit more interlinked, isn't it? Like, for example, um, a student can be taking a business course, but one might argue that to make them industry-ready, they're going to need to know a little bit about hospitality because they're going to deal with clients. They're going to need to know a little bit about media and comms because the the company is going to be, you know... Uh, promoting their product on the media somewhere, somehow, yep. right? But are we providing that, you know? Uh, I mean, to talk about PSB Academy, but as a general, uh, uh, it's the education uh, industry providing that level of... Uh, uh, I can't find the right words for it. Say, for example, uh, like multidisciplinary Yeah, studies. sort of. Yep. Yeah, just because... We, we, all, we keep talking about making everyone industry ready. Mm-hmm. And that's important. Totally yeah. agree on that. And being industry ready basically means that you, know, you need to know a little bit about everything mm-hmm. whilst being an expert in whatever that you're studying in. Yeah. Right? How do we do that? Very, very good question. Um, I think everybody has a core. Mm. Um, I'm a sales and marketing guy. Mm. So that's my thing. But at the same time, I'm applying it to education. So... I need to be able to understand consumer behavior. Uh, but at the same time, when I speak to somebody who is doing finance or wants to study finance, mm. I should be able to understand finance enough to actually have a meaningful conversation with them. Right. Um, then you have people who want to be marketers, but they actually do it in the finance industry or hospitality industry. You still need to understand the function and uh, the subject matter. So in that, if I want to do it in hospitality or travel and tourism, I need to understand the landscape. I need to understand how consumers behave. Um, and then I can target them correctly. And this does not always have to just come from formal education. Uh, I learn a lot from YouTube. I learn okay. a lot from, from webinars, uh, uh, courses, some you know, that might be free, mm. some that I actually pay for to actually go, go and learn more. Um, but it makes the learning process and ongoing uh, experience mm. and I think that is crucial uh, that if anybody wants to, to to actually say you know what okay I want to do one function but then after that oh I think I want to go into a different field you can learn about the field it doesn't necessarily mean that you always have to come back for a degree 
You could always do a short course. You could always do a professional training course. Uh, you can do immersive classes to learn more. And this is, th these are plenty. There's always opportunities. And I always tell people you should. Yeah. I think it's, it's an important thing to remember that it's, it's no longer enough for, for students to just think that, okay, I'm taking a course in college, business, hospitality, whatever. I'm taking that and when I graduate, I'm going to be a hospitality graduate and that's going to be enough. Um, I think that's uh, a little bit of a wishful thinking there in a sense where what is important for students to learn now is the ability to learn in parallel mm -hmm. in a sense where you don't have to, like, it's, it's not always 50-50, mm -hmm. but it could be a sense where, okay, you're, you're having this main course which you're learning, let's say it's hospitality, for example, but on the side, you know, uh, during your own free time, for example, you're picking up extra skills, yep. such as... Uh, an Adobe course or a course in uh, coding yep. or something so that there is something else that you're learning in parallel that continues to add value to what you have. Yep. Right? Agree. Completely. Yeah. I, I think one more, one more thing we would see is that uh, as the, the like, like careers mm. and jobs evolve, uh, universities and colleges evolve as well. We start bringing in programs that are more relevant um, prepare them with the right skills and even university curriculum you would actually see they, they start bringing digital elements into it um, they would actually be bringing things like coding uh, analytics into a hospitality program because you want to be able to see how somebody's in that industry able to crunch that data and actually make meaningful decisions business decisions based on that so these are skills that are going to transcend in every industry and that is something that institutions are already building in from mm. the start. Mm. But yeah, like you say, um, picking up those extra skills and courses outside, it's always going to be an additional benefit. Mm. Yeah. Okay. All right, so let's go uh, a little bit on the lighter side now. <laughs> right. So you've signed up, you're, you're in college, you start, you're going to start a course, you're in week one, day one, what do you expect? Okay, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get the ball rolling on this yeah. in the sense where... Um, for most students, especially for myself, right? Yep. I remember when I was uh, uh, in my early days in university. Keep in mind, I think uh, Facebook was a new thing, okay? I'm that old. <laughs> Facebook is a new thing. I was not in Twitter. So social media was still in its infancy mm -hmm. at that time. So the distractions were fairly minimal. Yep. And uh, what I was going through at the time was trying to meet new friends mm. I could care less about what I'm going to learn or what it's what classes <laughs> is about yeah. because all I know is that I'm alone and I don't have any friends yeah. so is it still the same now because again you deal with students right uh, you deal with new signups yeah. more than I do I deal with students directly they are in my class and I'm in a sort of like a an academic position so on your end you know the uh, I'm sure students are uh, sort of uh, asking you questions or asking the program exact questions left, right, and center about what should I expect? What do I do? Yep. You know, uh, do do I get the access card here? Do I get yeah. this? Do I get that? Where do I do this? Where do I do that? You know, so how do you sort of what do what do they need to expect first yeah. of all, and how do they navigate all these things? Okay, uh, I would say expect mayhem. For sure. <laughs> okay. uh, it, it hasn't changed. I think maybe the platforms has changed. Mm -hmm. But uh, first day of school, I don't have everything. Mm. I don't know where I'm going. I don't know the environment. I don't know anybody. Um, but I think that's the beauty of it, right? You go in there, um, be willing to make friends. In, in the past, when we didn't have social media, people were more willing to talk to each other. Uh, we made friends in a different way. Now... People immediately, let's connect Instagram, let's, let's, let's connect on Facebook. And then you actually have friends from there as well. But it's still the same. We still need, uh, you know, group mates, friends in class. Uh, nobody, even in this digital age, people don't suddenly just go into their, their, their mobile platforms mm. and, and completely zone everything out. Um, I think the problems are the same. Um, but I think how they tackle it is probably a bit different. Um, what I always tell students is don't expect things to move perfectly smooth. If you do have something that you're not sure, 
uh, you're confused about your lost, uh, these are the people you should speak to. If not, speak to me. I'll find the right people for you. Okay. I think it's important that that they have that support system. And when they have that, the, the doubt comes down a little bit. And it becomes easier. They feel like, okay, um, at least I know who I have to go to until they make friends. And then they slowly is like, okay, you know, I can take care of myself. Okay. Yeah. I'm going to sway off topic a little bit here. Okay, so on, 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 the, on the concept of finding friends, right, and uh, trying to make new clicks yeah. when you're a new student, it's the tendency is to always uh, go to the group that has the same feather, yeah. right? Uh, so for a Chinese, you find some uh, friends who are Chinese, or for an Indian, you go find some friends who are Indian, which is perfectly normal, right? It happens. But... What I'd say is, at least in my in my perspective as an academic, as a teacher, uh, what I always look for and look forward to seeing are groups that are multicultural. Mm-hmm. I love seeing that. Yeah. I, I don't know why uh, exactly, but it, it, it gives me a very positive feeling whenever I get to see that uh, through no intervention of my own, a, a group naturally forms and it's... Uh, uh, and it consists of a good mix of uh, a, a multiracial uh, mixture. Yeah. Say uh, you have a good mix of Chinese and Indian and Malays and you no. Know, and uh, let's say if it's a group of five, yeah. you have at least three or four races there. And for me, at least, you know, for all the students who are listening to this, yeah. for me at least, you, that group automatically scores a little bit of a brownie <laughs> point there. It's a bit unfair, right? I know, I know, it's unfair, <laughs> and I get it. You know, um, of course, the grading stays the same. <laughs> okay, but. Comforting it, to know. Yeah, it's yeah. <laughs> the grading stays the same, but it's more of a case where when I see it, I'm like, okay, you know, you guys are going places. You know, the fact that you're you're willing to to open up and meet new people, and to see that um, you're you're sort of willing to work out the differences, because to be frank, you're you're in year one, you're in week one, and you're gonna have to go through some kind of a group work. Mm-hmm. You know, during your your journey in, in the next two or three years, you know, as, as a student, you're going to have to go through some kind of group work. And at least from my advice is the last thing you want to do is to group yourself with the same group, same people all the time. Because at least from my end is that you're not going to learn much. The benefit of doing group work and to, to uh, be in Singapore for that matter, to study, is that you get the opportunity to learn observe and in many cases absorb the different cultures that you're exposed to right and i think that's a beautiful thing agree you know? so that's why whenever i see uh groups that naturally consist of all these multiracial people i'm like man this is good yeah and uh it 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 sort of automatically magnetizes me to go there <laughs> and help them out you know as much as i can and sort of help the group uh, sort of move along mm. a little bit faster. On the opposite end, okay, if I do see groups who are all like, it's either all girls or all boys or all Chinese or all Malays or all Indians, I'm like, dude, you know, you guys, you're not doing it right. I'm not saying it's wrong, yeah. right? But there are so much more benefit to you working with other people because you're going to graduate one day and you're going to find yourself working with different people whether you like it or you're not right yeah so the you might as well throw yourself in the deep end now and get yourself used to it and then you see where it goes and i think it it personally builds a lot of character especially after your your second or third year yeah you definitely see that change in this student um because i've seen it you know, I've had students who say, for example, I've taught them at a certificate level. Mm-hmm. In other words, at that point, they are likely going to be, I don't know, 16, 17 years old, perhaps. Mm-hmm. And then they slowly mature. And by the time they graduate uh, as an undergraduate, at that time, they're, like, they're probably like 20 years old mm-hmm. or so. And you get to see that level of maturity from someone who's uh, fairly uh, a recluse, you know, generally don't talk, but willing to put himself or herself out there. And you see at the end of, uh, uh, during the graduation ceremony or during those times, you get to see that big change. You get to see that, you know, uh, this person, you're ready, mm. you know? 
You're going places. And that is what fuels me yeah, as a teacher, to see that journey. Not so much on the fact that, do you learn what I teach or do you learn all these things in class? I mean, that's a good byproduct, at least in my case. But to see them go through this journey, I think that's what matters in my eyes. I don't know. Do you feel the same thing coming, coming when you're enrolling them and then you see them through the years? Do you still feel the same thing? I, I, I agree. Uh, I think one of the, actually not even one, most of the time I actually tell the students the same thing. I think uh, you coming to school um, wanting to learn new skills and knowledge, uh, you want different perspectives and you don't want perspectives from atypical right. or one kind of group. And I think maybe some of the uh, experiences you've shared might also be because international students, yep. um, think about it, just came from a foreign country, not familiar with the environment, might not be as familiar with uh, the language, the food and everything. The it's a good point. Things, it's a good yeah. way for them to... to, to be comfortable. Correct. You yeah. know, to feel secure. Exactly. To have yeah. people who are familiar with them, you know, being together, you know, sort of like a... Uh, it's a security net, Exactly, right? yeah. yeah. They, yeah they, they need that to start. And mm. I think it is good uh, to actually feel comfortable because I've seen students who have so much fear. They come in, they say, I, I'm not familiar with the food. I'm not familiar with the weather. I'm like, dude, uh, like you're Indian. There's Indian food everywhere. Uh, there are people who speak, who speak your language and you speak perfect English, right? And they're just not comfortable because they haven't put themselves out there. Uh, you you got to mentally frame yourself, I think, before you do anything new. Um, but I tell them the same thing. I mean, you're here to... You, you put yourself out of your comfort zone. So why not go a bit further, maximize your experience? And this is the same for Singaporeans as well. Uh, you don't just need to stay within the same group and when I was studying, I did the same. I, my group had everybody. I had like Malay students. I had Chinese classmates. Um, my first friend from school was actually from China. Mm. Yeah, we were buddies and we stuck through the whole program as buddies. Uh, amazing work, work uh, 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 ethic. Um, he had his merits. He was good at what he did. And he saw that he needed me for something. So it worked for us. So... Mm. Um, and we have a great friendship and this is how it actually builds. So you want to be able to learn from different people, learn different perspectives and not pigeonhole yourself in just yeah. saying that this is the, the one way to learn. And uh, school isn't just about getting the certificate. You can get that anyway. Uh, you want to be able to make lifelong friends. Mm. You want to be able to see how much more you can actually get and you want to be challenged. Mm. And I think that's what school is really about. Yeah. I think... Um I think I, sh I share this with my students all the time that one of the most valuable and precious memories that I have during uh, my days in the university was the fact that I got, uh, it was arranged as such that I had a Muslim for a roommate, right? So, uh, so what happened is that uh, for two years in a row, this guy was my roommate, right? And when the Ramadan month came along, mm -hmm. That means they you have to fast, right? Yep. So I was thinking to myself, okay, what do I do? You know, do do I uh, do I bring back food to the hostel and eat? <laughs> you yeah. know, I eat in front of you or something, or uh, man, it, it just feels weird. Okay. So so I told myself I'm gonna fast. So uh, <clears throat> at first it it started out as uh, maybe I'll try this for a few days. You know, see how it is. And then once the ball get rolling, and because we, we are in the same course, we're in the same classes, so it was pretty easy mm -hmm. in a sense that. So, uh, so I fasted for 30 days, right? So I did not fail a you single did. day. Well yeah. done. So what resulted was the fact that, okay, I get to tell people now whether or, whether or not fasting is difficult yeah. or easy, Okay. And uh, fun fact, the eating part was easy. The the not sorry, the not eating part was easy. It's the water. Yes, it's I the agree. water. Yeah. Right? So, uh, so yeah, so that was very precious memory for me because um, I get to sort of most of my friends were were Malay at the time, so I could sort of breakfast with them. You know, go to the various markets and buy food, and 
that was for some reason that was one of the fondest memories that I have in in in, in university. Yeah, and I'll never forget that. And that all started because, well, well, whether it's uh, by choice or not, I was paired with this person as a roommate. Yeah, and uh, I think there are a lot of merits into sort of putting yourself in a position where you're you have no choice but to learn someone from the opposite tribe, for example. And I think that's very good, right? Okay, yeah. so moving on. So we've talked about the first week in college, mm-hmm. okay? So what they need to expect and stuff, and you say, that, okay, expect the unexpected, yep. right? Be ready to sort of uh, meet new people, right? Learn new things, be open-minded, you know? Uh, although at the same time, it's okay for you to want to feel a little bit of security to be with people you're familiar with, mm-hmm. and that's okay, right? The good thing about it is that we have technology now. You can always FaceTime your parents, you can always FaceTime your loved ones at home, you know, video chat, TikTok, whatever you want to call it. You know? yeah. So we have all those things now. Back then, we don't have those. Right? So all we have is a phone call. And even that, we sometimes don't use it that often, isn't it? So, yeah. All right, so the next part is, I think uh, it's a good time for us to talk about this, is whenever, I know, uh, we, our students enter into this new phase, university or colleges, they sud- especially for international students, they suddenly find themselves with this new found freedom, mm. all right? That all of a sudden you're like, wow, I have all these money that I can decide pocket money yeah. that I can decide yeah. how to spend, you know, and I have all this time on my hands and pretty much it's my choice, quote unquote, whether I want to go to class or not. Right? I hope they do. Uh, of course, we hope they do. <laughs> but you know, our students will be students, right? So, so basically, you have all this freedom, mm-hmm. you know, all this flexibility suddenly thrown at you. Yeah. It's, it's almost as if uh, the floodgates are open and you're, you're sort of free to swim to wherever you want to go to, right? Mm-hmm. How does student learn to manage this type of freedom? Because I've seen it time and time again that it can go right or it can go very wrong, right? Yeah. And they pick up pretty much some nasty habits along the way. So how do we help students with those things for those listening in? Yeah. I... This is part of the the growing up process. Yeah. Yeah. Maturing, independence. It's no perfect way to actually balance this out. Mm. Um, we can actually guide students. There are interest groups. So, you know, some people love sports. We have uh, our sports clubs. Some people like, uh, you know, um, traveling, exploring food. So you kind of find cliques and, and friends for that. Um they always know the most important thing is their studies. That's why they're here. Uh, but not that they shouldn't enjoy life. I mean, you're in a new country, you want to yeah. try things, you want to experience it. You mm. should. I would always say you must. Mm. Um, I think when they have uh, a friend or people they can actually speak to, it's, it helps them. And uh, I think it's always important to pick the right friends. Um, and then your, your path is kind of set there. I mean... Uh, our team is here to always help them if academically they are a bit off, they need help. The lecturers are here. I, I believe you speak to students yeah. when, when you feel that maybe things aren't going in the trajectory that yep. you would expect them to. Uh, similarly, I, I mean, I still have students uh, reaching out to me and say, hey, Suresh, I need advice. Uh, I had a student from my postgrad days. Um, he was actually going for a new interview and he was worried. Um, and he was like, Suresh, can I speak to you? I was like, what's up? Um, he's like, I've got an interview with Facebook or wow. Google. I can't remember. One of those. Yeah. Okay. Big ones. The big boys. Yeah. So okay. he was like, uh, can you prepare me? I was like, okay, come down, meet me. Let's talk. And then it was like asking him what would he do through the interview? And he told me, I was like, okay, you got to change this. You got to make a few different changes. When he got the job, bam, first thing he, he texted me. I was like, I got the job, man. Thanks. It's like, what do you want? I was like, just come down and say thanks. That's all. Mm. Yeah, it's 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 important that they they find they 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 have people. I I think the the your, your structure needs to be there in place, and um, that comes from us as consultants. Uh, over time, they become friends. Um, you have the program executives who keep them, um, like in in 
following in the right line. You have the academics who, who make sure academically they're there and if they need advice, they need a friend and the friends. That's, that's the whole structure. So I think as a school, um, we always make sure that everything is put in place. Um, yeah, when students actually veer off, we, we do our best to bring them back. Um, um, but again, it's a choice. So it's going to be challenging. It's, it's interesting because we've all been there. Right, we 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 all we've all been students before, and uh, I know how it feels like. That's why that that's what I always tell my students in the sense where, uh, hey, you know what, you know, um, missing your deadlines, uh, not co- not showing up for classes, just just feel like not coming to school at all. Been there, right? We we felt it before, and then the pressures of exams, yeah, uh, the pressures of failing, it's all there. And of course, coupled with the fact that you are now with a group of friends that uh, could either lead you to be very hardworking or could lead you to uh, a very dark place, right? Uh, so here you're, you're talking about it could be the difference between going bowling with your friends and going clubbing late night every night. Yeah. You know, so I'm not saying either one is right or wrong. I'm just saying that there has to be some kind of balance that you need to find yourself learning how to navigate through all these newfound freedoms. And uh, because, well, first of all, um, this is the stage in life where you learn to manage your responsibilities, mm-hmm. right? Because it's all on you. You know, your, your parents are uh, entrusting you with their investment, their hard-earned money, mm-hmm. $30,000, dollars $50,000 at a time, and for a lot of parents, they work really hard to pay for all these things. So that so for students who are listening to this, they are sort of entrusting you that you have to learn how to manage their trust, first of all, learning not to abuse it. And if you find yourself needing guidance along the way, that's what your uh, lecturers are for. That's what your program counselors are for. That's what your... Uh, you can even go to whoever that signed you up in the first place. Mm. Basically, anyone who is in any institution that you're studying in, right, should have that ability to uh, guide you and give you some sort of advice in terms of telling you how to go about all these things because it's not going to be easy. Uh, And the peer pressure is real, Uh, especially being exposed to... uh, the Facebooks and the Instagrams and the Twitters, you know, mm-hmm. you're, you're going to want to stay, um, how should I call it? You're, you're going to want to put yourself as someone who is uh, always up to date with all the latest trends, with all the, uh, all the latest tech, all the uh, uh, fashion trends and whatever, right? So that, that pressure is always going to be there. And uh, um, learning how to sort of handle all these things. We don't have all the answers, Definitely. Uh, I don't think I have. I don't think Shurish has either. But uh, come to us if you need help. You know, uh, if you have uh, doubts or if, if you know, uh, whether it's a personal matter or whether it's uh, something that you're struggling with, it's important for you to know that we are here to help. We are not just here to teach you the syllabus and be done with you, yep. you know. Uh, Seeing you grow as a student, seeing students grow, I think that's uh, that's where the satisfaction comes from. Not so much in terms of get seeing you get that A or seeing yep. you get the distinction. I mean, that's good and all, but at the end of the day, it's always seeing you mature as a person, right? So no, yeah, I mean, I, I think sometimes pride comes in the way. Yeah, yeah. definitely. I, I think if you have a problem, you need help. Hmm. Speak to somebody, first thing. Where mm. if you need professional help, we have counsellors. Mm. If you need a friend, they're all of us, right? Like you said, we're all here to help. Yep. Uh, we all want to help. Uh, the, the last thing we want to see is a student fall off the bandwagon for whatever reason. Yep. Um, it's, it's always hard navigating through this whole maze, you know, with, with every new thing actually happening. But uh, yeah, first thing, ask for help. Speak to somebody. If you can't fix it, escalate it. Yeah. Mm. And I guess on my part, I check in with students every once in a while. How are things going? How's the class? How's the lecturer? Um, is there anything wrong? 
I think if they tell me then and I see that as feedback, then I'll I'll go work on it. If something's not happening in class, um, if they're not they're not getting the support they need, then I can go speak to a lecturer. And say, hey, can we do this for students? Um, if they're not getting the support from the program executive, what else can we do to make the experience better? Uh, on our side, that is important. We need to be able to maintain it if we really want to be able to say that we're student-centric, we're here to help students, and I think all of us want to. Um, we don't want to see a class as a number of a collective individuals. Once they finish it, they're out, we move on. Um, we see this as community. If the community likes you, more people come in. More people say, this is where I should go. This is where you should study. You start telling your friends and it is good for everybody. Yeah. Mm. I think uh, it's also important to note that, you know, while we are going, we're always going to be here to guide you or to, to help you wherever we can, it's uh, sometimes we are going to throw you in the deep end. You know, sometimes. That's our job, right? Yeah, that's our job. So, uh, that that's part of the maturing process. That's part of stretching you, in a sense, so that uh, from that you come out stronger. You know, uh, so you will see from time to time that, especially when it comes to teachers and your lecturers and uh, your your module leaders, whatever you choose to call it, sometimes we will choose not to give you the answer, so that you figure out ways to empower yourself to find the answers on your own. And uh, that's just part of the growing process. Okay, so before we end this whole thing, okay, it's been a good talk, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it has been. So before we end this whole thing, uh, Suresh, where can people find you if they want to find you? Uh, you can find me on the website. Mm. Um, I think more importantly, if you are looking for business programs, my team is available. Uh, look us up on the PSB website. Um, um, yeah, you... you yeah I mean I don't think I speak to students as much as I would like to anymore okay um, still love to but I, I still am lucky enough to speak to parents and, and students if they have challenges uh, but if you are looking to, to, to further your studies or you just need advice on the next step whether it's signing up now or in the future we're here and we're always ready to, to help you wherever we can alright cool so for everyone else who wants to find out more about what we do what we have can always google psb academy and i'm sure the search links will show up yep. you know uh, all the various sources that uh, and resources that we have to offer so with that being said thanks bro for coming in thank you very show. much Eric. uh and for those who want to tune in you can look look for us on uh, youtube as well as the various uh, podcast platforms once we get all this up and running <laughs> okay so thanks for tuning in we'll see you guys on the next episode cheers thank you